Hey guys, it's M4J here, and welcome back to the Majefries Network on OpenTTD. Let me just unpause the game, and we are pretty much ready to go. So today, what we're going to do is, according to my to-do list, we're going to build a new underground line starting at GSC. I think I said GSG last time, I've changed it since then. We are also going to build an overground extension that links up with the Great Western Main Line, and we're going to build the western end of what's going to be end up ending up being called the South Bank Line, which is going to meet the Western Suburban Line at Plin Hill. So let's get started and jump straight in, shall we? So as I said, we're going to build an extension to the overground network. Now how this is going to work is quite simple. We've got two tracks here. We're just going to double it along the majority of the route. Um, but we're going to make it in a way so that... Um, it doesn't interfere with the existing main line. There might be little connections between them, but the majority of the time it's going to be strict, strictly for one type of, uh, of route only. And I've, I've realized that probably doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of terraforming here. A lot of terraforming over here. So we've got to make this all fit. We're going to lower all that. Uh, sorry, we're going to raise all that. We're going to pop these tunnels back in with the electrified track. We're also going to put the signals back in because they're very important. That's that bit done. Now we're basically going to lay a second set of tracks either side of the original set like this. And then we're going to reroute this route slightly so that it comes down into um, this trough. We also need to rebuild these bridges so they are one wider. Which also means we've got a lower, quite a lot of land down. But that's fine. I was expecting that. Can't be a surprise when you were expecting it. So that's going to go back to being a viaduct. That's going to go back to being a viaduct. Okie dokie. And then lower that bit down, lower all of this down like so second set of tunnels going through there like that and then that links up there and that links up there right now this junction here is going to be a little bit on the tricky side basically it can't be a flat junction anymore it's got to be um, slightly different And also this area here is going to be slightly different as well um, by the end of this. So that's going to end up like that. Uh, see, already I'm starting to get stuck. Let's get rid of that. So this reminds me a lot of the real life overground network in London. Um, sort of the section between Dalston and Highbury and Islington. Maybe a little bit beyond, but I've never been in that direction, so I wouldn't necessarily know 100%. This is one area where I haven't done that much research. I know about the Underground Network. I've done lots of reading about what used to be the North London Line, the West London Line, the East London Line, and the South London Line. I know about all of that stuff. What I haven't done a huge amount of research on is the actual infrastructure that uh, goes into it. Um, it's like where services start and terminate. So it's more the logistics actually rather than the uh, the infrastructure. So this does need to be cut back, thinking about it. So does this, so does this, so does this, so does this. Um, so does all of this. Okay, so the new way that I'm going to build this is this is going to come across like this and it's just going to join up with uh, this. So it provides a link between the north, east and northwest main lines. That will be handy in the future for uh, freight diagrams. And we'll re-signal all of that. In fact, I think that was that type. Not that it matters too much. There we go. 
We'll say that's resignaled. That looks pretty even to me. Alright, and then this is just going to be a straightforward. Uh, there's only going to be two tracks still. Kind of layout. So that's going to come across like this. And then this one. And then this one. And then this one. Like that. Okay, now over here it's going to get a little bit trickier. So that's already at sea level, so I can't lower that any. Oh, that's annoying. Is there a way I can change that? I think that somewhere. wouldn't be there. Is it here? I'm sure somewhere you can change sea level. You can edit the map height. Oh, hello. That's upset the game. <coughs> yep, we're into non-responsive mode. Are we back into responsive mode? I'm not sure we are. Oh, no, we're into non-responsive mode again. Bear with me, everybody. Alright, there we go. So that's now been raised to 52. So what I really want to do is change the sea level. Which you can't do from that menu. Can you do it from this menu? I could have sworn there was a way to change the sea level. World generation. Um... Apparently not. Apparently not. Initial city size multiplier, that's not really what we're worried about. What's this? That really annoys me when it says no explanation available. Really annoys me. Limitations? Aha, this looks like. Could be a little bit more like it. No? Is there really nothing about sea level? That's damn annoying. I was going to put these platforms at a slightly lower level. And then have a second set of tunnels. But I can't do that now. Which does mean I'm going to have to improvise slightly. Basically what's going to happen here is... Um, oh, I might have... No. Yeah. I might have found a way around it. Possibly. No, maybe not actually. It very much depends on how I do this. I kind of want to do it like the way the existing underground network works, where um, there's four tracks running alongside each other, but it's left, right, left, right, if that makes sense. So it's not like fast and slow tracks. It's kind of like what we have over here, where you've got the slow tracks on this side, and then you've got the fast tracks on this side, except on the overground there is no fast and slow. It's just the two different directions. So I kind of want to replicate that over here. And the reason this is a four track section is because the lines that come out of GSC here, which are finally going to be um, constructed on, I don't know how long it's been since I actually built these. Uh, a lot of people were asking me, a lot of people were quite upset actually about the fact that there were two tracks that weren't being used. And I'm not quite sure where that stems from, but there you go. You have your wish. The tracks are now being used really exciting hopefully fingers crossed uh, again I'm a little bit trying to work out where exactly these lines are going to go I'd like for them to meet up just over here and have an interchange station even if the line then breaks off again for a little bit because uh, this is a metro station as well so it would work out quite nicely if we had an interchange between the two Right, while I'm here, let's go up the plan list. Is there a way? No. How annoying, you can't make them all visible at the same time, but you can hide them all, which is not what I want to do at all. Right, there we go. So third rail-wise, that's now constructed. 
Uh, they're going to stay there actually, these two platforms. This is going to have to go, the aluminium plant, which is rather unfortunate. Somehow, I need to get these extra two tracks over to over here. And actually, even here, this now goes this way. Like that. In fact, I need to do it at a slightly earlier um, available option. Let's see. If I just take all this back like that. Now it comes down like that. And then it comes over to here. And it comes over to here. You go like that. You go like that. Uh, this one branches off like this. This will then be the bridge, like that, and then this one will run underneath. That's my phone. Guess you forgot to put their phone on silent. All right, and that connects up there and there. Okay. Whilst I'm doing this, actually, I need to select this uh, loop. All of these trains need to go back to depot. Because I'm breaking up the loop. I'm doing a proper um, professional job and completely breaking up the loop that we know it. So it's no longer going to work like that. Which I was, I always find that quite annoying actually. Um, London boasts that it has an orbital rail route, but if you actually look at it, you can't catch a train from Clapham Junction that goes straight back to Clapham Junction again. You always have to change. So the, the competition really, uh, I saw one on a channel once, the competition was which loop is faster. Um, and I believe the race was from Clapham Junction to Highbury and Islington. I believe. Because that's where the two northern sides meet. Well that's annoying. I need to move this over slightly. There we go, slightly better. And now this one will come down, and there we go. There's our four tracks. So the reason I say that this is no longer going to be a loop is because actually, this line here is just going to go straight ahead into GSG. Likewise, this line here is just going to come straight out of GSG. I'm going to do a rebuild. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do at all. So this can go back to how it was, including getting rid of all this. This is kind of something I've just made up on the spot, by the way, which is why it's a little bit... like I've built that first bit, and now I'm saying, oh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that at all. Yeah, that's why. All right. And because there's no trains going to be running on this section to start with, I am going to put links in so that the trains that are running back to their depot from wherever they happen to be on the loop can do so quite easily right this is going to be lowered back down uh, what was I saying oh yeah I find it annoying that everyone says well there's a <coughs> excuse me there's a loop line in London there isn't even the circle line I'd say the circle line is more of a loop than the uh, the London Overground Network the reason being is the circle line does actually complete a circle before it goes off down to Hammersmith it does go Edgware Road to Edgware Road and then goes down on the uh, the spur with the Hammersmith and City line. London Overground doesn't do that. If you actually look at the tube map, I'm going to take my phone off charge and put it on silent whilst I'm doing this. So if you actually look at the tube map, um, you go on a train at Clapham Junction, that train goes straight on to Stratford. It doesn't go down uh, once it reaches Highbury and Islington, it doesn't go down through Dalston Junction and Shoreditch and um, through the Thames Tunnel and back round again. Likewise, if you get on a train going that direction from Clapham Junction, um, it terminates at Highbury and Islington. Also, if you're doing it in the opposite direction, so if you get on an overground train at Highbury and Islington wanting to go back to Clapham Junction anti-clockwise, if you get the wrong train, you could end up in Richmond. So... The overground network isn't a complete loop. You do have to change train. And I find that annoying in some cases. I wish they'd make it more like the circle line, where it would do a full loop and then jump down to elsewhere on the network. It doesn't, it doesn't have to necessarily...
be awkward like that. But then, who knows? I didn't build it. I don't know the full ins and outs. I might keep this as a junction, actually. I think as a junction, that looks kind of cool. Um, I do need to continue building this section of track. Otherwise, I'll forget. So, that's the station there. And then from the station, it goes straight back into another viaduct. Like so. And then here, you hop up and over like that. This one hops up and over like that. And then they connect up like this. Bit of a tight corner there. Well, we'll have a speed restriction just to make that so. But uh, it's not all bad. Right. Signals. In fact, whilst we're here, let's convert all this. So I was originally going to make this a non-electrified section of track. Because it's now part of this overground network, I will make it electrified. And this is kind of crucial as well when it comes to um, the electrification of the overground network. Because some of it will be electrified at third rail. Some of it will be electrified at overhead. Um, and it's a, it's a mystery so far to me as to which is going to be given which. Uh, no, that needs to stay like that. It's that that needs to come off like that. Um, and now somehow by getting rid of all of these tunnels I'm going to somehow link all these up again so I think this should go to being a tunnel rather than a bridge like that Let's see. Huh. <laughs> I've stumped myself again. It's to do with this freight line. Let's get rid of the freight line. I can always build that back in afterwards. That's not the important part of this build. The important part of the build is this. you now run through there, you now run through there, that joins there, that joins there. I think the only thing that's annoying about this is if I move this back one, oh I have to move them all, can't, don't I? Dum dum, right there we go. Okay, this makes life more manageable because now I can do that. That's important. Like this. And this will probably have to be moved back one as well in order for this to work. But if I do this, now I can build the freight line back in and actually get it working again, which would be very nice and then these will all link up, this will come through here and then these two lines will go straight ahead um, via a set of tunnels here and then at this point I mean, I, I mean this whole bit here needs redoing anyway so might as well go ahead and do that uh, also this is going to turn into a bridge that's going to go up and over these two tracks uh, so that needs to go down again there's not enough room mess that up, there we go so that's going to go up and over like that except it's going to be non-electrified have I done that? Yeah, I've done that wrong. That doesn't fit. Hmm. This is really difficult. I don't think it would be this difficult. So basically now, that has to come all the way over like that, as does this one. And then from here it splits.
If I just make them two single track links, that might work. That might work better, but even then it's still not great. Let's lift all this back up a second. I think something I need to do is, is this now needs to go up and over the main line rather than uh, underneath it. I think that's the first step is that. Like so. Um, as for these lines, I kind of want it to turn this way. Like that. And then go via... Well, it's going to have to climb out of the ditch at this point. I believe. So you have to go like that, and then up. Hmm. We we'll have to completely move these freight lines. I think that's going to have to be the solution here. Is completely move the freight lines. I do still want it to come off here. It's just how to connect it up over here that's the uh, the contending issue. I think if I no, if I leave those in, they have to stay in anyway. Otherwise, you can't get in and out of the freight depot. I've just realised. So they will stay in. So that one like that, this one like this, and then this one will run straight down like that. This one will run to there, and then you join up with that one, and you join up with that one. That's fine. It's over this side where things will have to move and change and stuff, but that's something I can deal with as and when necessary. So I reckon I can still use uh, bridges instead of tunnels and, and, and things like that. Tunnels instead of bridges. I think this can go back to being a tunnel. Thinking about it. Uh, let's actually get the land prepped on the other side. There we go. And join up. Perfect. Got to stop saying that word. It's not perfect at all. It's terrible. It's nothing like what I wanted it to be. Let's put it that way. Uh, okay, next trick is over here. How messy is this going to end up being? Because I still need to get the freight lines. So I need to get this line over here to connect up over here. The way I'm going to do that is have two double tracks that come down on this shelf here. Uh, yeah, on this shelf here that are then going to converge into that. So to show you what I mean, that one's going to come like that, that one's going to come like that. We're then going to have two tracks that run along like this. You're going to simply hop it up and over like that. This one's going to do the same. Whoops, let's use the right scroll, shall we? this is going to connect up again over the here it's then a case of what does this line do I can do this and then have it run underneath like that and then you'll continue down like this and then you'll connect up there that actually works out quite well problem I have is I'm going to bridge here so I'll do a, I okay I, I've got an idea if I bridge this over like this bridge this one over like this and then straight off this bridge they dive down again into another tunnel which brings us out over here and there'll be a station built here I think that works one thing I do not want to do is link this up to the main line that's not, that's not what's happening here same with over here it's not really what's happening anymore. In the future, maybe. 
but right now the loop is currently a separate entity. It is still linked up to GSG, you just have to go into the station and out again. Um, I do kind of like the way that junction works. I think that, that does get trains in and out a lot more efficiently than uh, I could have done. Like if I actually tried it, that's kind of an accidentally well built link. Let's do this bit next. So let's see, there'll be a signal there, there'll be a signal there. Like so. Which means if I get rid of that one and that one, build a pathfinding signal there. I've already got one over on that side, which is fine. Um need one here as well. If I temporarily convert that back. Redo this signalling here. There we go. One there, one there, and one there, which I'll set up in a second. Convert this back to a pathfinding signal. So let's say we're going to have a short section of overground over here where there's two tracks running next to each other uh, with three stations it looks like maybe four if I build another one over here which we probably don't need but you never know is what I'm going to say to that uh, we also need a junction on this side of things which is not going to make things any easier to have to try and build. Um, I do like the idea of the staggered junction. So I think if I have pathfinding signal there and there, get rid of you and you. So you go across like that, and then this one goes like this, and then like that. Yeah. Again, it's not it's not tidy per se, but it's very rarely going to be used. At the moment, it's only being used by returning trains trying to get back to their depot. Uh, actually, I haven't built ones going in the opposite direction. Which signal? Is there a signal there? I cannot see a signal there. Oh, there's one there. Yeah, let's move that to there. There we go. Now it's a bi-directional junction. Looks a little more messy now I've done that. Oh well. Right, um, so over here, this is now all linked up and all working again. Uh, this line itself, by the way, is going to continue down this way like this. And again, we have another divergence over here which is going to be quite interesting to build. Also, what am I going to do with this? Because I'd like some services to continue into GST as well. So there's an option to quadruple this track in and just build a second junction over here. But the idea really is there's going to be no complete loop. So I need to give myself some more funds to be able to do this. There we go. So again, it's going to be a case of a double track here where I guess this side will come down to Shoreham Junction. So we'll have trains running from GSG to Shoreham Junction via the loop. That kind of works. That does kind of work. Uh, and then this will be... So trains coming out of GST will go down this way and through. Ah. Yeah, okay, we'll come back to that. Let's say we'll come back to that for now. So I need to build the rest of this new line. That was the point of today's episode. Um, so maybe some more tunnels here. I want this to actually leave Guard City. So we're currently here. I want it to kind of come out this way and go up through these towns maybe just terminate over here at Pontbridge 
I mean, that kind of works. So just to remind myself, this is the line that comes from down the south here. You can see this where the conversion goes from uh, overhead to uh, DC. And there's the storage sidings, which will be very handy because there will be some services that terminate here and don't continue. I oh, know this is the GSC bit, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, this makes life a bit more interesting. Maybe I should have this go onto this line and the GSC line go onto this line. But then there's the whole in instance of over here. How would this work? I can do that one like that, and then I can do another step junction uh, here, which would connect that one up. If I move this one to here, it doesn't mean there's a little bit of wrong line running there, but not too much. If I unpause this a second, get this train running a bit more. Like that. So that adds a bit more variety as well. I might extend this line a little bit longer then. Um, so from which one is it? This line? Yeah, so from uh, Pont Bridge where do I go? Utilising that island would have been handy if that town was just a few tiles further south. So I think heading up this way, maybe building a station there, building a station there, and then maybe up this way. So follow the land as best as possible, Renningston, maybe terminating up here then at Bunhatton. Like that. That could work. Right, let's build the lines. I'm at an advantage here because the line is relatively straight going up into the hills. It's only here really where it, it comes across a bit to go through uh, Renningston. That I can do quite easily. So see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll make it a little bit longer in case the signals are a bit off. So the station's going to sit here just below the town, I think. And then we're going to go in a straight line this way. Uh, through the field. Again, we're going to try and keep the line as straight as possible through the field. And down the uh, the hill. So let's go like this. And I should be able to go straight across for the majority of the route. Like that. And then it's only at the end here where I have to come down like this and then like this and there we go now you come carry on back down the steps like so there will be a town built here we're the station now I feel like we're in metro land territory where I'm building new towns around stations. So I'm building the station first and then building the town around it. And that's basically what's happening here. Uh, no two ways about it. Nothing wrong with that. It's very reflective on real life. Right, there we go. And then you hop over that. Oops, you hop over that. And here I'm going to have to demolish this industry because the track's going to go through here. Like that and like that. Okay. And then these two tracks are going to come along this little bit here. Except obviously they're not going to go via there. And then they're going to come off this way up to there. And then to there. And then to there and to there.
Okay, and then this comes out like that. There's a hotel there still. I think if I put the station just here, that should have the catchment of the hotel as well. Which would be quite nice. Alright, I feel like we need a tunnel at some point here. Looks like we're going to have to tunnel underneath this section anyway, so that works out quite nicely for me. Like that, and then if I lift this up, like that. These two trucks come along. We're going to go around the back of this building, like that and like that. Uh, this river we are going to get rid of, because that, whoops, did not mean to get rid of the uh, the bridge. As I was about to say, that provides a perfect avenue into a station in this town. Plus, I've danced around water quite a lot in this map so far. So every now and then you will see me just demolish a river. Uh, I think I did that quite a bit when I was building the, um, the line to Fort Flunwood. Partly out of pure frustration. Getting to a point where the line was going really nicely and then there's just a big blot of water in the way. You see me sort of just go, ugh, and get rid of the lot. I do that from time to time. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. As I say, I, I dance around a lot, a lot trying to avoid certain obstacles on this map. So every now and then you will see me lose it and just go, screw it, and demolish something or move, move something if there's no other way around it. Which, again, is very reflective of real life. A lot of the time builders will try and build around something and if they fe feasibly can't if it's just that impossible then they will just get the bulldozers out uh, Crossrail, good example of that there's a lot of buildings in, as part of Crossrail that have been demolished a lot of which have been quite controversial as well uh, the reason I'm not that fussed about it personally is I don't know much about the buildings that have been demolished there was a theatre building that was demolished at Tottenham Court Road and there was, I think, a couple of clubs in Soho were shut down as part of the building work. Um, some of it could have been, well, the majority of it was they were in the way, which is rather unfortunate. That's the bit that I wish could be avoided. But the bit that I'm not too fussed about is the fact that some of these buildings have been around for a long time and perhaps structurally could not take uh, a, you know, a crossrail tunnel boring machine going underneath it could have collapsed. So in that respect, if that is one of the reasons behind it, then you can't argue against it, can you? I'm not saying that is one of the reasons behind it. Personally, I, I don't fully know. As I say, I, I barely know the buildings that have been knocked down, never mind um, the significance behind why they were knocked down. Uh, but it is... Uh, I do find it sad. I look at some of the construction work that's going on. So like at Paddington, you've got one of the oldest... In fact, I think it's what, the oldest still functional terminal station in the country. Uh, built in Brunel's time. Built by Brunel, never mind in his time. And they've got this fantastic new station that's being built next to it. And it looks really, really nice. My issue with it, though, is... Some of the uh, some of the old features of the station are being lost to allow the new crossrail station to be built. That's the bit where I get a little bit sad and think, was there a way around that? Chances are there wasn't, and I can't complain about that uh, if that is the case because they they're the ones who are trying. It's not me. Right, right here, right now, you can definitely tell I'm not particularly trying to save these buildings. I'm more than happy to see them go. But in the, in the real world, um, they would have tried to hold on to as many of those features as, as they could. Uh, they're trying to build something brand new in a city that's full of old buildings. And I'd say they've done a pretty good job with it. So I get why people complain. It's the usual thing. I get why people complain. Me, personally, I don't mind. But I get why other people are upset about it because it's it's their history and their heritage that's being lost so it's a tricky one crossrail especially is a very tricky one um, even some of the uh, the archaeology that's going on they've discovered all of these uh, new and wonderful things about London old London road, uh, Roman roads things like that 
problem is they do have to dig it up because it is in the way. So you end up with um, archaeologists working around the clock to sort of get that done and get that finished and get out of the way before the uh, the boring machines come through. If anyone has watched the 15 billion pound railway on uh, the BBC, that was a very interesting insight into um, Crossrail. And there was a whole episode that had a, a feature on archaeology. And it was very interesting to see how they sort of dealt with it. They were on a time limit. They had to get out of the way. One of the unfortunate things about these boring machines is they, they, they seem to... The average human, they move incredibly slowly. But if you're in the way of them, and you're on a time limit to get out of the way of them, they move very, very quickly suddenly. Uh, and the next thing you know, you you really are busting a gut to try and get out of the way of the uh, the approaching machines. Uh, that doesn't go there. That one goes there, and then actually, let's use a modern, more modern shelter for this particular station. It's a new build, after all. So you go there like that. Staggered platform here. We might as well have ticket machines or something. Actually, we need a bridge. That's what needs to go here. The entrance to the bridge. Like that. And then we'll build the exit some other time. Um, so yeah, Crossrail. Sacrifices had to be made. I'm a huge fan of Crossrail. I think anyone who watches these videos can pretty much work that out by themselves. I like Crossrail. I think it's a brilliant idea. I'm really looking forward to being able to ride on the trains when they first open. Uh, something that does still annoy me is I'm always reading articles where they say you know Crossrail is 95% complete, and then I look at the completion date of 2019 when trains finally run through the whole uh, tunnel system. I just think, is it really 95% complete if it's still two years away? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Again, I'm not an expert. It would be very interesting to see, actually, if anyone who watches these videos uh, works in the civil engineering industry. Very, very interesting if they work on Crossrail to get their opinions and to get their sort of insights to what's going on. Because um, I'm, I'm at a stage now where I'm watching the TV show I just built over something. No. Uh, I'm watching the TV show and they're constantly bragging about um, how close they are to finishing. But for me, it doesn't feel like they're close at all. The other thing that annoys me is typical dramatic television is there was an episode of the £15 billion pound railway where they were trying to disassemble some uh, struts that were holding the walls back at... I want to say Whitechapel, but I'm not sure if it was. Uh, I think it might have been Whitechapel. But, um, I mean, you've got these professionals there. People that have been working in this industry for years and years and years. And they've obviously been told by the director of this show, like, really ham it up a bit. Make it sound like it's, it's Jeopardy waiting kind of thing. So... It gets to a point where they're they're cutting out the first strut and they're constantly saying, "Oh, if this fails, the whole building's going to collapse." And I'm sort of sat there going, "It's not, you know. These people have done their maths. They're not idiots. They know what they're doing. Uh, that it's not going to collapse." I mean, in the past, there have been civil engineering projects where a building has collapsed or a bridge has collapsed because somebody hasn't done the sums properly. That has happened. Uh, and it's it's very unfortunate that those sorts of incidents have happened. But because of those incidents happening, we're now in a position where those kind of incidents will never happen again. Uh, so it really does wind me up when I watch these shows and they're always going on about this, this fake jeopardy. Uh, the building could collapse at any minute or, you know, if this strut doesn't do, do its job properly, the whole thing's going to collapse. And you just know that it's not. That winds me up. So uh, there was a lot of that in the 15 billion pound railway. There was a lot of that about uh, were the trains going to be ready on time. Um, there was a guy who was very 
thorough, shall we say, in his job going around picking out faults in the train design. Um, <laughs> at a point where the train had actually been built, which is quite interesting. I didn't quite know that's how they did things, but um, again, I learned something new from that. So I liked the show, although it was a very good show, but I didn't like the fake Jeopardy, and I didn't like the way they really tried to ham it up. That annoyed me. Apart from that, though, I couldn't recommend it more. Sounds like I'm criticising it, doesn't it? But I'm I'm not. I'm trying not to. See, on the flip side, I, I watched a documentary that was from a long, long time ago where they were building the Jubilee Line extension. And with that, there was actual jeopardy. Um, I think one of the tunnels collapsed or something went wrong, basically. Um, nobody died, which is always a good thing. But it, it got to a position where uh, the, the whole project was just stopped. They turned the machines off for three months. Now that's Jeopardy. That actually happened. That was a real thing. They didn't fake it. They didn't make it up for good television. That was a real thing that really happened. And it shut down um, construction for a considerable amount of time. That's one of the reasons why we don't have that anymore. Like we don't have issues where construction has to be stopped because it happened on the Jubilee Line extension when they were driving tunnels under central London. They learnt from it, they fixed it, and now it won't happen again. That's another reason why I get a bit miffed is because it has happened in the past and serious consequences were as a result of that, but they fixed it so it doesn't happen anymore. Anyway, this is the overground line starting at GSC. Tick. Right, the next thing is to build the overground extension to the Great Western Line. And that requires coming back over here. Now because of that, I'm tempted again to extend this to four tracks still. But then you end up with an, it, a case over here where it doesn't quite work. The other option... No, that doesn't really work either. Alright, so the Great Western Main Line is here. The idea is to build a triangular junction inside this area here. So that will come off in this direction and it will join up with another line coming off from this side. So this will break off this way, this will break off this way, uh, this will break off this way and then this is going to join up with this. Like that and this one's going to join up with that and there you go. That is our connection to the Great Western Main Line, or it will be once it's actually uh, finished. So the way this is going to work is we have local tracks, we have express tracks. At the moment, the local tracks are the two that run down into this side of the station. I actually do want to stick with that idea. I was going to change it, but I think it will work better if we stick with it. One thing that I will do, though is extend these bridges out by one like that and like that they should be normal railway ones and they are this is then going to come underneath like so and connect like that which that still doesn't fit alright we're going to have to extend it one more these are going to be some of the longest bridges in God City and even as I'm saying that, I'm realising that I'm probably wrong and there's going to be people screaming at me. There's lots of people that watch my videos that love to uh, point out when I make mistakes. There seems to be a real culture of, of, of that these days and I never quite know why. I'm just thinking here. Hmm. I have an idea, and it involves undoing most of this bridge construction I've just done here, so apologies for that. But yeah, there's a lot of people now that watch my videos where if I make a mistake, 
or if I say something that's slightly like one of the ones was um, Eurostar. What's the top speed of a Eurostar in Britain? And if you're thinking 186 miles per hour, unless I've got my facts wrong, which is likely, I'm not going to say it's unlikely, but very seldom do I get my facts wrong when I'm doing the online research. More often than not, I do get it right. And that sounds very big headed, I know, but um, I feel like I have to point this out to some people. The top speed of a Eurostar in Britain is not the top speed of a Eurostar. It is not 186 miles per hour. To my knowledge, on high speed 1, trains are limited to a maximum of 140 miles per hour um, because that's the speed of the Javelin. And in the Channel Tunnel, which I think most people know this anyway, the top speed of a Eurostar in the Channel Tunnel is 100 miles per hour because the, the shuttle trains that go back and forth have a top speed of 100 miles an hour it also means that no train is queued up behind another train that's my knowledge as far as I'm co as far as I'm aware that's the correct knowledge uh, there's those are the correct facts but the the truth is that the Eurostar does not reach its top speed in the UK so I did the video where I was talking about um, how British Railways isn't that primitive compared to what people might say it is and I stand by that and in fact, since I've recorded that episode, I've found even more facts that support that argument. Um, so again, I'm very willing to uh, to fight that case. Where does this line come from, by the way? Oh, that's the South Bank line. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm more, more willing now to fight that case as well. Because um, I've actually read more things. Uh, like, people say there's been a lot of investment, or there's been more investment in in British railways since privatisation yes there has been but only in new trains in terms of infrastructure if you think back I mean I wasn't alive during the 80s how anyone younger than me can comment on my videos arguing that um, we're better off now than we were during the 1980s is baffling considering I don't remember it because I wasn't born how the hell do they remember it they definitely weren't born um, anyone older than me say people that were born in the 80s or the 70s again very much like your opinions on this. Um, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate in a lot of my videos now. I don't like saying people are wrong because half the time you're not wrong. But at the same time, if people present an argument, I will try and present the counter argument because um, it's it stimulates conversation. Let's say I'm not doing it to wind you up or anything like that. I'm just doing it to uh, to keep the conversation going and to keep the debate going because it's it's very interesting when you get different sides of the same coin um, so in terms of privatization as everyone knows who watches these videos I am a huge fan of privatization I do not want to see the railways renationalized but because the debate has risen in political conversation recently I did do some reading about it most electrification that we see now the East Coast Main Line, the West Coast Main Line um, the Great Western, uh, the uh, West Anglia line, the Great Eastern Main Line, they were all done during BR days. Uh, the London South End and Tilsbury Railway, I want to say, the line that comes out of Fenchurch Street, that was all done in BR days. In fact, that was probably one of the earliest cases of electrification in London. Um, that was done during the 19, very early 1960s, I want to say. Again, I could be wrong. Apologies if I am wrong with that. Um, where am I going with this line? I kind of want to connect it down here would be good. Because then I can have some terminus platform. Actually, no, maybe not there. Maybe over here. So I can have some terminus platforms as well. Let's think. I want to do it before the underground joins up. And the underground joins up over here at Plin Hill, as we know. Uh... So maybe if I join it up over, yeah, over here. The problem I've now made myself is we're actually going to bridge over the metro here. I don't think we're going to connect. Um, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, plain devil's advocate is what I'm doing now. So the whole Eurostar argument and the BR days argument, it's one that I will always support privatization. 
I don't think nationalisation is good for the British Railways at all. The reason I don't think it's a good idea now is because I know there'll be a lack of investment now because most government departments are actually budget cutting rather than adding. But that's not to say that during BR days a lot of what we now use as part of our modern railway system was implemented during those days. And that's why I think people are wrong to say that um, nationalisation was a complete disaster because it really wasn't. A point that I made um, off camera to somebody recently was the reason France and Germany seem to be so far ahead of us in terms of rail infrastructure is purely down to the fact that they lost pretty much all of their rail infrastructure during the Second World War. It was bombed. We bombed it. <laughs> you know, uh, There's no hiding from that. We're the ones that caused that. Why did I do it like that? That's completely... Missed that. I might as well just do a straightforward diagonal flat junction here. Um, yeah, we messed that up. We're the reason that happened. So we are directly responsible for uh, Germany and France having a better rail system than us, but not in the way that you'd imagine. Not because we haven't progressed, but more that they had to progress because they had nothing. So they started from scratch again and ended up building a rail infrastructure that was better than ours because they had no choice but to. You know, they didn't have anything else. They didn't have a rail infrastructure anymore. So when you start from scratch, it's very easy to build these big straight lines and electrify everything because you're building it from scratch. We're having to work with infrastructure that's been around since the, uh, the 1800s, the early 1800s. Some of the original rail routes in Britain are still used as rail routes today which in itself, for me, personally, is an achievement in British engineering. It shows how great British engineering is, the fact that we're still able to adapt what we were given a long time ago. Uh, and I make it sound like it was a present. It probably wasn't when you think about it. But um, the fact that we are able to adapt it like that is is one of the reasons why I still think British railways are the pinnacle of, of the rail industry. It might not seem it at times, but believe me, I, be I personally believe that is the case. Um, so yeah, it's it's always interesting when you look at it uh, to see what people think. There's always going to be an argument. There's always going to be one side versus the other. I can tell you now there's no right or wrong answer. It very much depends on opinion as to what you want to believe. That's just the way life is. Right, I'm going to continue talking about that, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about this for a second. We're going to be building a little bit of a different shaped station here at Plin Hill. Plin Hill's getting an upgrade. It's now going to feature through platforms and terminus platforms. Why? because we're about to run a more vigorous schedule running through this station. We're going to have trains terminating here, we're going to have trains um, arriving and departing constantly. So we need to make sure that uh, the station runs nicely and smoothly. And again, I'm just checking to make sure we have enough room for what I want to do. It might involve moving the water. I've also got an itch on my hands. You'll have to bear with me for a second. Right. Um, first of all, all of this track, I'm just going to demolish it because it's the easiest, laziest way of doing it. Crossover. Crossover. These two tracks, one of them continues. Let's not do that one. Let's do that. Like that. The water is definitely going to have to move for the time being. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a reversing siding. I have this elsewhere on the network. I can't remember where. It's on the northern side, though. Um, on those DC lines. I have a very similar setup to this. Designed for this kind of um, scenario. Okay. So that is a straightforward path signal. This one here is a straightforward normal signal, so is this one. That we're going to get rid of. 
I'm going to put a signal here and then we're going to put path signal, path signal, path signal and then we're going to build a um, turn back siding there. I think, let me show you the other one, the one we've got on the northern side. So that is over here. And you can see I've actually built this one the other way around. So platforms are here and then you go in and then you come out. Uh, that kind of works. Again, this is where the uh, the underground meets the DC, although this is slightly different. Incidentally, this third rail network here, this bit essentially, is part of the uh, the overground network. It's just part of the third rail overground network. This is the DC line. As you know, the Watford DC line is part of the overground network at the moment. Uh, you can also see I've mapped out where the metro line is going to go to connect up with this. I'm sort of happy with it. Not 100% happy with it. Um, I've also rebuilt another line here that goes in and out of GSG. I can't remember if I did that on camera or not. I probably did. Anyway, let's go back to down here. Made that a pass signal as well. I don't know why I've still got that open. Right. So again, I'm going to do a very lazy station building here. But I'd say this is quite a crucial station on the line. It's where several trains will turn back. We've got trains coming in from three directions at this point. We've got the metro trains coming in. Uh, they will be joining via probably a grade separated junction actually. Um, although we are building that now, so I'll be able to tell you in a second what kind of junction that's going to be. Uh, it's not facilities, it's fixtures. It's the one. Right, so this is this. And then that is at Right, you are deny if next order is over this way, then uh, allow. That's that one done, and then these two are going to copy off one another, except there will be a subtle difference. So you're deny if entry direction is from the back then if next order is this one just want to check that is the right I oh know it's that one okay so you are over here or if next order is somewhere else then allow. That's for when this line branches off. Incidentally that's going to be where the uh, the metro joins up here. It's also going to branch off on this side here. So that's going to go straight ahead like that. So we end up with four tracks again here and then somewhere um, down here, the metro track's going to dive under the. Uh, the actually, I might do it the other way around. Let's get this train out of the way, and then I'll see. That's the final part of this episode: is building the uh, the overground link, at uh, the underground link. Sorry, metro link. So I did that and that. Dive under, dive under. Connect this up either side. And then this line is going to come along like this. Whoops. There we go. This one's going to come along like this and join up directly next to it. And then you're going to go down this way, you're going to go down this way. Right. This signal is going to copy from here. We're going to get rid of this order. And if next order is this, then allow. 
So that means that the train will come in here and into this platform. It will then reverse into the siding and then it will pull out again into this platform and then it will leave again. And that should help with delays. Trains shouldn't hold each other up if they're doing that. Uh, and then this one I have already done. The other one doesn't need doing because it's a one-way signal. And there we go. That's that connection done. Right, now let's build the metro line, shall we? So I'm going to actually start at the GSG end of things. And uh, not the GSG, the Guard City end of things. Because we have to map out how this track's going to leave this suburban area. So there's going to be a station here first and foremost. be foolish not to have one. This is all going to be built up in the future. What I'm going to do, probably off camera, as you can see that the overground track here is kind of pinning in the, the growth of the uh, the city. So at various points, like here, I'm going to dig all this out and turn it into a viaduct. Maybe a little one here as well. And then just let the, the city naturally grow um, underneath the track and out into the wilderness. I say wilderness. I mean, it kind of is wilderness, I suppose. It's very... Uh, very sort of urban. No, don't mean urban. Very suburban. That's what I mean. I'm distracting myself by building, which does never help. And that's not a grammatically correct sentence. I'm sure someone will pick up on that in the comments. Right. And if there's anyone out there, by the way, that's saying, uh, or is thinking, you're a YouTuber, why are you complaining about people complaining in the comments? The reason is, I don't make these videos for people to then go, oh, you made a mistake. Because the way I see it, the majority of people who point out my mistakes don't make videos themselves. So I probably don't realize how easy it is to make a video with a mistake in it. I challenge anyone who questions my mistakes. I challenge you to on a student budget which is next to nothing by the way like all my software all my capturing software and stuff like that apart from OBS which is free anyway but everything else was presents I haven't bought anything myself because I can't afford to even my PC was bought partly as a present so I challenge anyone who criticizes my videos for having mistakes in on a shoestring budget make a video upload it to YouTube and see how many people point out mistakes and if you're not getting mistakes pointed out I guarantee it's because you're not getting enough viewers which is still a problem on my channel by the way which is why I ask people to uh, to like and share if they uh, do enjoy the video because I'm trying to get my audience numbers up at the moment because they're a little bit lacking something else which I should plug shamelessly whilst I'm uh, talking here is I have started a football blogging site Anyone who follows me on Twitter should be aware of this already because I did share it. Uh, if you do follow me on Twitter and you're not aware of this, then I can't help you with that. I'm afraid I have no idea why you wouldn't be aware. Um, I've started a football blogging site. It's called Inform Football. I started it with... I don't know why I did that. That needs to be lifted up still. Um, I started it with a couple of friends. Um, only two of us are contributing to it at the moment. I think the third will be joining us soon. Uh... I've written two articles on there. I would like it if you guys went and checked them out. Because again, it's to the posts are to stimulate conversation. They're not to say anyone's right necessarily or wrong necessarily. And I know that my second post in, in particular is quite controversial. Um, it mostly involves telling certain football fans to stop moaning. So, um, yeah, I would appreciate it if people went and checked it out. It's one of these things where if you subscribe to the channel because you like me personally then I very much would appreciate people checking it out if you just subscribe to the channel because you like me playing open TTD then that's fine you don't have to go read the po post if you don't want to but I would still appreciate it if you did simple as that uh, no that doesn't go there right that bridge coming in very handy in fact coming in handy to the point where the old uh, running line here is, is where the uh, the metro track is actually going to go which is also very handy now this is the first time the metro probably properly leaves guard city which I'm quite happy with it's the first time we actually go properly out into the sticks 
which is awesome. So because of that, I mean, the reason I've built this line in two stages is technically at the moment we are in a position where we can start running trains through this section of line because Bankside is equipped to handle terminating services. So that is a possibility. However, I might not do it on camera in this episode. I might do it off camera um, because I can see some problems happening. Uh, I can't remember if you saw me do this at the start of the episode or not. I might have done it just off camera before I started recording. But we still have an issue. I think it's to do with me changing the date so that it's always um, 1965. But we end up with trains that are like 200,000 ticks ahead of their schedule. Which is a nightmare. Because they then sit in that station. Considering Bankside only has one terminating platform at the moment. And you've got trains sat there waiting for 200,000 ticks. To put that in context, 250 ticks is about 10 seconds. 200 ticks is 10 seconds. So it's it's um, 10 times 100,000. So it's a million seconds they're sat waiting there for. Uh, there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. That gives you an idea as to how long they're waiting there for. I, hope, I think I've done my maths right there. I hope I've done my maths right there. I'm going to look a bit stupid, aren't I? Let's work that out again. So was it 200,000 ticks? There's um, it's 20 ticks in a second, and then it's 200,000. Oh yeah, I've got that wrong. It's 200,000 times 20, basically. Well, divide by 20. 200,000 divide by 20. What am I saying? Yeah, 200,000 divided by 20 to get it in seconds. Which is... Um, it's alright. It's not like... I, it's not, I can work it out. It's not that I can't work it out. It's because I'm focusing on this. 200,000 divided by 20 is... Uh, is 100... Take a breather. 200,000 divided by 20 is 10,000. That's how many seconds it waits for. So it's waiting for about three hours. Man alive. That's one of those ones where I can't speak, but it sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about. I do. I promise. I do. I do know what I'm talking about. I just sometimes get my uh, my tongue twisted. Uh, no, I did want that there, actually. Right, so the signalling for the metro is going to be 7 up until... I need a built-up area. If I put a station... I can't fit one there. I was going to put a station there. Let's see, there's going to be one here and there's going to be one here. So I think then if I put one... either side of this bridge... like this. That's going to go down like that. That's going to go up like that. Get rid of you. Get rid of you. That's a pain. We'll get rid of those ones for now. We'll just put them at the end of this platform here. So There's going to be an interchange between the overground and the metro here. In fact, I could put it there. Thinking about it. And because this is going to be quite a main station, again, I'm tempted to put a third track coming through here with a terminating platform, although I'm not convinced that's actually going to work out well for us. But the. Um, island platform. It's going to be like that. And then. I'm assuming you're both going to be the same platform. Yep. Two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And then after this point, it's going to be uh, they're going to be five apart because it's going to be more intense running into the city centre. Right. So every seven, every seven. These two are obviously going to be changed to be path signals.
Right, and then from here to here, like that. Awesome. Right. Now to build the metro stations in the city. Now I should say I'm going to use a special type of station for all of the metro. In other words, there's going to be no other tr track type in the entire map that's going to use the same um, type of station as the metro. So, whoops. Right here we've got the metro station, which is fine. Because you kind of anticipate that's going to be the case. Let's see, they will go there, that one will go there, and I think we'll use the tall skinny trees for this bit. There we go. And then once we get out into the uh, the suburbs here, I think what I'm going to use, I've got the British station platforms, which I could use, but I think I'm going to use these ones, the rural ones. So I think these look more likely to be um, used on the London Underground and that's what I'm basing my design off so it makes sense to copy that. So these ones here especially are going to be redone. Like so. Um, need to have the station here as well two three and let's use the outside ones and four now again I'm gonna build stations in what looks like the middle of nowhere but these will end up being part of towns towns will grow or towns will be built to meet these stations it's kinda of so that stations are evenly spaced because it doesn't really make sense to have a huge gap between um, two stations. I just again, it's a stupid idea. So we're gonna have one here as well, like that. And then over here, we're gonna have a final one, which involves moving a signal. not so advantageous when you've got the station so close together uh, sorry the signal so close together when you have to move one it does end up being a little bit of a pain so like that's now three and a half tiles rather than four which could end up with trains bunching up against each other but hopefully it doesn't right um, This looks a bit weird as well. Two, three, and one there, one there. There we go. Evenly spaced. <coughs> so there's one there. Actually, this kind of needs to be here, doesn't it? But then that puts it too close to that one. But there is going to be one here. Two, three, and four. Oops, four. Like that. There we go. And then there's going to be one down here in the middle of the oil field as well, which really doesn't sound like it works, but um, we'll make it work. They asked them. The one of the key things to remember with uh, this bit here is. It won't be industrial all the time. There will be towns grow up here as well to uh, to make this more feasible. There we go, and then there'll be one down here to link up with this bit of the town. At this point, I'm not that too not too bothered about um, putting the platforms evenly between signals. That's always something I can change in the future. So you can see here there's this kind of like this cross town interchange between Metro and um, Overground. They're not actually linked directly. If 
for a couple of stations here and then there's going to be uh, it's not going to connect either it's going to be a couple of stations here where it's just going to be pure metro and not overground including the one that I'm just about to build here and here the overground's going to run straight through the middle of that uh, and there we go now once we get to this point it's going to share bog standard platforms kind of like how the Bakerloo shares with the overground at uh, on the Watford DC lines up as far as Harrow and Wealdstone and then we've got an extra terminus platform up here at Great Winfield Airport which doesn't have any planes running from it yet no it doesn't put it in context there's Great Winfield if I follow this up and then follow this up, um, there's Punfingford. So they're built a long way outside of the city. And there is also one down here at Rinston. I keep forgetting that this is now an airport as well. Uh, someone asked me in the comments, I think it was James Moton, asked me about... Um, Am I going to build towns that are only served by air and or water? No train, no road. I can't. It's a simple answer to that. Maybe by boat only I can do, but by plane only is going to be impossible. The reason being is there are noise restrictions. You see here noise limit in town, zero, maximum three. This size airport that we've got, where is it? Over here. This size airport produces a noise level of five. So you have to have a really small airport, which means it's just not economically viable to have uh, to have an airport with small planes running to and from it because you just won't get the passenger numbers that you need in order for it to become a feasible uh, mode of transport which is a shame it is a shame because I would quite like it to work but sod's law unfortunately um, right I'm just doing some sort of mental calculations can I get this to work? Can I get trains running from Bankside down this first bit of the South Bank line? I think... I think maybe I could. I could try and sneak some in. Possibly. I mean, this is all signalled. This works. This whole section of line down here has now got stations as well. So this works. I think it might be doable. Maybe. The only thing I'm worried about is trains waiting to get into Bankside. That's a killer. I mean, look at this. This is all because this train was set to wait at Bankside for 20,000 ticks. So I've had to redo the whole thing. So the problem being that if I use this for the South Bank line as well, this is where the trains are going to originate. Um, and as you can see at the moment, there isn't really enough room. The other thing I could do actually that won't work at all. No, that won't work. <coughs> Unless I do it from this side. So here I could set it so that these signals only let through trains that are then going to go to Victoria High Street whereas this one could set trains that go to Victoria Central. Actually whilst I'm doing this um, maybe not. I was going to rename this Canal Street one of these two stations Canal Street but I can't think of a way of getting the canal through without having to completely rebuild certain sections so maybe that's not going to work at all if you look from above Guard City is starting to take shape now you can sort of see where the rivers need to extend still I'd like to extend this river round and into this lake likewise this river I'd quite like to extend round and maybe have it branch round into this lake I do want to get this to work though Hmm. Let's see, next episode we do the other end of the South Bank line. So I might wait till then. Yeah, I think I'll wait till then. This episode's been an hour and 25 minutes now, so uh, I should probably start wrapping things up. Alright then, we've got an extra depot here on standby for when this starts working anyway. We could always try and extend it maybe down this way a little bit more. 
build a second depot. I have this loop down where, I don't know, that's probably asking way too much. It's worth considering though. So I would like to use the depot for multiple services, but only if it's going to work. If it's not going to work, and if it's quite obvious it's not going to work, then there's no point trying, is there? It always annoys me the way these roads grow. Like here at Stillington. Why does it do that? You don't grow there. Uh, or no, you do grow there. It's... Oh no, you don't grow there as far as here. Uh, this one doesn't grow at all. Neither does that one. Neither does that one. And I think it does it over this side as well. Maybe not as much now. Well, it does still do it a little bit here. At Menborn. But here's a good example. This used to all be derelict. Built these bridges in and all that stuff. And now look. It's quite expensive. Okay. Let's do a quick recap before we end the episode. So what I have done. First of all, all of the uh, the overground trains are being sent back to their depot that run on the loop because the loop no longer exists in its original form. Um, we've built this overground extension. It now runs four tracks through here. I think all of these have been upgraded to four tracks, which is good. This new line goes off down this way and off to the wilderness. This way carries on around the, uh, the original loop. Um, the original loop now goes into Guard City and terminates there. I might reconfigure this slightly so that it goes into a terminating platform rather than a through platform because I'm not sure that that was actually a good idea when I built it. So what I might do is have the third rail and the line from the northwest come down this way and go straight on through the terminus and then have the loop lines take up these two here and sort of go straight on into um, terminus platforms. That sounds like the logical way of, of working it out. Um, so this now goes into GSC, which is finally starting to get up and running, which is quite exciting. There's going to be an extra station here. There's also going to be two more platforms here, of course, to link up with that. Uh, over this way, we've now got a little triangular junction here that connects up Sort of. There is a junction which is probably never going to be used, but it sort of connects up to the Great Western Main Line. It runs next to it for a while as another sort of DC type line, before then coming down this way and connecting up with this Western Suburban Line, uh, which then also links up with the south end of the south, or the west end of the South Bank Line, which then runs through Plin Hill and then off towards. I've done that again. Um, and off towards the airport over here at Great Winfield. Um, as I say, the South Bank line now also exists, or the western end of it exists. I might get trains just starting to run on this off camera, so the next time when we come back, we can start getting the eastern end done, and then we'll have trains actually running through the, the through platforms of Bankside for the first time um, in this series. Right, that does it for today's episode, guys. Uh, been a busy one, lots of building work. But, yeah, that's part of the... Um, part of the way we're doing things now I suppose okay yeah let's end the episode thank you very much everybody for watching don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and of course if you enjoyed the series drop some comments down below with ideas for future episodes if you haven't already subscribed to the channel be sure to hit the subscribe button if you have already subscribed to the channel then thank you guys for your continued support and until next time I will see you soon